Welcome back. For this next clip that I'm going to show in this series, what I've done is created two different tracks for the animation player for going around the racing track. I'll introduce you to a new, different, very sort of strange type of animation track and how it can be useful. Let's tune in. Okay, now you can see what I've done here is I've taken off active for our animation tree. I'm going to go back to using the animation player for the time being, just so that I can show you another trick that's really, really useful for cutscenes, really for uh, a lot of things actually. This is way handier than anyone would give it credit for, I think. If we go to the animation player and we look at this default animation, one that I'm playing here first. Starts at zero, offset, which is just back here. And it goes to 0.1. If we look about right there, I'm gonna hide this for now. If we go to next, and again here, if we look, we just wait until that animation is finished. Then we go to next. Next looks quite a bit different here. First off, you'll notice I don't actually have a point here at the beginning. I have a point down here at 5 seconds, a value of 0.3. If you remember in the previous one, we ended at 0.1, so there's actually 0.2 value in between those two, which means what's it going to do? Like, it's not this isn't trigger, this isn't discrete, it's not going to just jump. Is it going to, what's it going to do? Well, normally you wouldn't get this behavior that I'm going to demonstrate. You only get it with this capture track. What the capture track does is it says, well, I'm going to capture from where it currently is and start animating from there. So that means that no matter where the previous animation cuts off, this could be, you know, 0.1, it could be 0.01, it could be 0.2. Obviously, it should be before where this one picks up, or it'll look a little weird, but who cares? Uh, the, the capture track here is the useful part, because what it'll do is it'll say, okay, at this point, I'm at 0.1 on this track. That's where it ended in the previous one. So between my zero and my five seconds, I'm going to go from point one to point three. And that's where it'll get. And then it'll start from there. In this case, I've got point eight. I'm going to move it all the way to the end because it was really fast in my tests. But essentially, this is really useful for more than just cutscenes. This is useful for cutscenes for the same reason that uh, for the little explanation I'm going to give. Imagine if you were, if you had a teleporter, let's say this is your teleporter, and you come in from the left hand side, so you're aiming in here, you jump into it. If you do that, you might want to make it so that the player can enter it anywhere and it'll automatically move them into the center of it in a clean fashion and take over you know, make them invincible, whatever, make it so they can't miss the actual entryway for the teleporter if they get near it. Normally, if you had this on a normal, you know, continuous track or one of the others, uh, when you hit the side, you would have to have an animation to take you from the exact point that it's at into the center. Or maybe if you hit up here, you'd have to have one for that too. Maybe if it hit here, you'd have to have one for there, one for there, one for there, all the way around, basically infinitely. With a capture track, you don't have to do that. With a capture track, you just have to say, here's my end point. Get me there. And it'll do it. So wherever it hits the point where it says, okay, I'm going to put you into the teleporter now, it'll take you from that point to wherever you're point says it is. 
And that's sort of uh, a good reason that's useful for cutscenes is, let's say your character enters where it's going to be into a cutscene next. It might be, uh, say you're in Final Fantasy VI and you have a cutscene where you have to go dance in an opera with uh, Prince Rolfs and you don't want to, you, he's gross, you want Draco or I forget how it works, whichever way it is. Been a while since I played the game. Uh, but let's say you can get onto the dance floor from anywhere, but you always have to dance with one person who's on the opposite side. Well, you don't want to have to rely on the player to get over to that character, no matter where they're from, because it's a cutscene. You want it to run smoothly, you want it to run the way you want it to run, not some weird hack, for example, that the player wants to run. So you use a capture scene to go from wherever they enter the scene to the player who's going to be dancing. And then from there you animate it however you want to. Now we can see this actually run. It's pretty interesting. It, uh, it's actually pretty smooth. Here we see we're going for just the first leg, and it just goes to there about, and then it just goes for the next part. And finally, this is now traveling through the final leg, the 15 seconds, all the way up to point 0.8, I think is what I had it set at. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's just another useful little trick that I hope uh, something you can use in your daily life. Um, eventually here I will be publishing the code for this, but this is going into an actual game, so for the time being I'm not. But if you pay attention to my page, I will try to get that out there as soon as I finish this game. It is for a game jam, so I expect to have it done relatively soon. Um, yeah, so remember, for cutscenes, it's best to kind of... Um, circumvent stuff. There's other things you can do, for example, with your animation player. Um, so let me show you this. Uh, turn right. If we go to our player, it has different properties on it, right? That we have up here. Is idle, is turning, is playing, is car, etc. We have this set property. We can actually add a call method track here at select player. So for turn right, we can do insert key, set property. Now it'll infer that it has two arguments and you'll have the option to put them in here. So for the string argument, we'll say is turning and the type will simply be true. Now, because that moves it into a turning state, it will have the blend position available. So now what we get to do is we'll actually just decrease our thing here to point 0.1. That's just so we can have things relatively happening relatively quickly. We insert another key. We do set property again. This time, for this property, we're going to do, uh, what was it, was it blend car? I have it here. Yes, blend car turn. And the value, instead of being a Boolean, is going to be, this is turn right. So we just want a float of one. Because if you remember, it's a number line from negative 1 to 1. I had right on the right. Now let's make this the default. And let's also comment these out just for the time being. And then play it. Notice the wheels have turned. Now... They look a little funny, and the reason for that is I don't have it set up so that turning to the right, uh, oh no, that's not the one we want. 
uh, I have it uh, so that you have to have idle off also uh, in this case. So basically what I would want to do here is also go up one and say insert key again, set property, this one. We will say is idle, boolean false, and now you see the wheels stay in the same direction. They don't look weird flickering. Yeah, so uh, that's about that. That's how, for example, if you want them to look a little snazzier going around these turns. Um, one final trick basically just for pretty much just for vehicles um, I, I haven't encountered this as useful really anywhere else but um, when you're going into a sharp turn as you can see here I've got a sharp bend right there and I've gone ahead and put break points sorry I've gone ahead and put in keyframes near the beginning and the end of the turn now most people would have you try to solve that using some sort of uh, easing here. And it's probably solvable that way. I'm not sure offhand how to do it. But you do, if you right click, you get default options, which is really nice. Um, but we're not going to use that, actually. We're going to use a different trick. So right here, we want to slow down. We're going to do a little hack here where we take our speed if you go to playback options under it an animation player can actually animate its own playback speed so that means for this amount of time it will be moving slower and now you just want to have it speed back up so what will happen is it'll hit about this point it'll slow down to go through the curve I'll speed back up to come out of it and that should be what that looks like. Now, it did not slow down that much because the, oops, the amount of time between it was not very good. And let's reduce this even further. Yeah, so it slows way down and then it speeds up. So that's just something which is useful for uh, mostly vehicles. I haven't really found a great need for that with uh, characters or things of that nature. So, all right, I guess that's it. Um, the only other thing I would mention is it's good to have areas that are triggers for dialogue. This is something I learned in my previous game jam. Um, if you have an area and you have it, have the ability to automatically advance dialogue that's exactly how you want to handle cutscenes if you've got it so okay and yeah i'm gonna wrap it up here because it's pretty long already thank you very much